Healing is where you are. Power. Power is where you are. Rest. Rest is where you are. Love is who. Love is who you are. And I've got to be where you are. Thank you. 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 Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a good day to be in God's presence. Amen. 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 And to be where he is. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for this opportunity to be in your house this day. And we thank you that all things are made new in your presence. So we thank you for renewal. We thank you for um, revival. We thank you for understanding. We thank you for um, your Holy Spirit capturing you, our thoughts and transforming our minds. We yes. thank you for the angels that are present yes, who are here to help us today and to minister to every life. Thank you. And we thank you, God, that your Holy Spirit will be able to release everything that is needed today mm. in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for being here. Hopefully everyone has a, um, an outline that we're going to be following. Uh, April is a special month for us here at Spirit of Life um, because of something the Lord has placed on my heart. I want to uh, go over again the declarations that we're believing God for for 2016. You remember Dr. Jerry Savelle said that 2016 would be known as the year for the great breaking loose. By the way, hello to everyone on Periscope. Uh, make sure you invite your friends and your followers. Uh, we have a word from the Lord and those who are watching on YouTube or will be watching on YouTube, we have a word from the Lord. But Jerry Savelle said that 2016 will be the year of the great breaking loose. There will be more and more notable miracles loose in the earth. Yes. More and more signs and wonders, more and more angelic visitations, yes. more and more instant healings, more and more deliverances from yes. demonic activity, oh more and more finances will break loose so my people can do more for the kingdom of God, yes. says the Lord. Yes. Yes. And then for Spirit of Life, we have five personal declarations for 2016. I will walk in the wisdom of God in every area of my life. Can we say that? I will walk in the wisdom of God in every area of my life. Number two, I control my daily decisions and create the future God has for me. I control my daily decisions and create the future God has for me. Number three, I respect God's desires for my life. I respect God's desires for my life. And number four, I bless others and receive repayment from God. I bless others and receive repayment from God. And number five, I do those things that lead to success in this life and in the life to come. I do those things that lead to success in this life and in the life to come. All right, are you ready? Amen. Amen. You have an outline? Listen, this is what I'm doing today and thank you so much for traveling with us in April. I am introducing a lifestyle change that is huge. It is going to be very clear. As a matter of fact, it, it will connect with everything that you find in the Word of God. And you finally see what God is really looking for. So today I'm introducing the topic. And then each week I'll be sharing more and more. Um, Apostle John Alley, and by the way, my apostolic fathers, we, we uh, uh, standing in their authority today, uh, from Apostle Danny Williams and Apostle Bill Johnson, yeah. and interesting, yeah. Apostle Earl Johnson called this morning and just wanted you all to know what God is doing in our midst and how uh, the things that God has for us in terms of revelation. 
If you would like to uh, study ahead, I, I can never share everything that I'm learning. Uh, Apostle John Alley in his website, Peace Apostolic in uh, Australia, he has listed his books there that he has given away free now as downloads. You can still buy them on Amazon to support the ministry, but as one of the Apostolic Fathers, he's released a number of his books. And one in particular uh, that I'm dealing with some of the information is the spirit of sonship. So if you wanted to pick that up, you can go to Amazon and pick it up. You can also uh, pick it up in other ways, okay? In this book, Spirit of Sonship, he tells the story of a young man who was in their worship service, and the young man had a strong prophetic gifting. And we have people in this house, matter of fact, all of the spiritual gifts of the Holy Spirit are in this house. Amen. We are trying to get them to release and, and operate. Amen. But this young man was in a worship service at their church. And while the pastor was preaching or praying, the young man became aware that an angel had entered the room. And I'm trying to find um, re the recording of the, the, the meeting that we were in uh, not long ago in uh, Leesburg, Florida, where they prophesied about the two angels that are in our worship services when we come together to minister the word of God. I, would, I think it would encourage your heart to hear that. But we are not in here by ourselves. Holy Spirit is here. Amen. And also angels are yes. present here. Amen. Yes. On so as, that's right, they're here on assignment. Yes. So as the young man, as the young man was listening to the pastor, the angel was there in the room. And he said it was a very tall angel. And the angel was holding something in his arm. He was walking around the room and it appeared that the angel was writing something down. The young man began to pray as he saw the angel walking up and down every aisle in church. And by the way, God does that. Amen. He goes up and down. He checks with each one of us. But the young man began to pray as he saw the angel walking up and down in the church. And at every aisle, the angel would stop and look intently at each person in the church and then write something down. Suddenly, the angel was standing next to him. Now listen. The young man began to feel that something was not right. He continued to pray. He asked the Lord, Why am I feeling this way? Why am I feeling that something is not right? And he heard the Lord say, It does not matter that you think the message your pastor is preaching is true. That is not what matters. Did you get that? So the angel followed the story. So the angels, the Lord, he, you know, the angel moving around. He's praying to the Lord. The Lord said, it doesn't matter that you think the message that your pastor is preaching is true. That's not what matters. The Lord continued. You have been listening to many sermons for many months now. And what you heard you believe to be true. But that is not what matters the most. What matters the most is you need to listen more. Now, I know, I know you still don't even understand the point. Because what the angel was doing in that service, listen, was looking for people who made a decision for listening to be part of their life. Listen to it. As opposed to those who simply acknowledge and accepted that what they heard was true. Did you get that? Yeah. So the angel walking up and down the aisle. The issue is not, oh, that's the truth. Right. The angel was not looking for that. The angel was looking for those who made a decision. That I'm going to adopt my life. I'm going to change my life to listening to God, to what is true. As opposed to those who just listen and they listen more and then they make listening the thing they did and it never becomes part of their life. Let me say it another way. Are y'all still here? The angel of the Lord present. As angels are present here today. Whenever the word is being preached, angels are present. Listen, 
not just to see if you believe what is being preached is true. Because we're listening to the sermon. Let me see if I believe what's being preached is true. That's one thing. But the angel was taking note, listen, of those who made a decision to really listen to what is being preached and to make listening part of their life rather than those who just listen. Did you all understand that? Sir. Yes or no? Yeah, yeah. Kind of. Let me say it again. Because it's not a subtle point. It's possible for me to be in church. And I know enough to come to church and say, oh, let me make sure what I'm hearing is true. That's one thing. We ought to make sure of that. But then there's something beyond that. It's for me to make my listening part of my lifestyle so that what I hear, I incorporate it into how I live. Versus, that's true. It never changes me. But it is true. The angel looking. Who will make a decision, listen, to act on what you heard? Not just listen and say that's true. We do that every week, isn't that right? We come to church and we say, oh, yeah, yeah. But who's going to act on what you heard? Oh, yeah, that's true. Wow, that's true. But we never make the truth part of our life. Are y'all hearing me today? I'm praying for a spirit of understanding. Pastor, what are you saying? Let me work on it some more. Are you ready? All right. Everyone, hear me. Everyone listening to the message today on Periscope and YouTube, wherever, everyone will not respond in the same way to the same word of the Lord. Everyone listening will not act as if God has spoken to them. Yes, yes. All right, yes. Even though God is speaking yes. his word, yes. everyone won't behave the same way. Some of us will simply say, oh, that's true. Others of us will make a decision that listening is going to be part of my life. I'm going to live as someone who listens to God. Amen. So while God is speaking to all of us, guess what? You are the only one responsible for your attitude and your response to God for what God is saying today. Amen. What I'm about to share is very serious. Matter of fact, I believe it's the most central truth that is missing on earth today. First, I'm going to say it in, in its uh, compact. You get files Somebody send you a file, maybe not through um, Dropbox, but other files. They have to condense the files. They have to compact. What's the term? They, they, they depress? Compress. Compress. Okay. They have to compress the file, right? <laughs> so, I'm, listen, I'm going to give you the compressed version of the medicine. It's going to be time released because we're going to release it throughout the sermon. Amen? Amen. We're going to unpack it. And then each week it's going to get deeper and deeper and deeper all the way through. To where you're going to finally say, oh, I get it. You're going to be able to go from Genesis to Revelation and not miss it. Wow. But, listen, it will be one thing for you to say, that's true. Because it will be true. It will be another thing for you to incorporate it into how you live. Are you ready? ready. Let's go to the first scripture. Uh, point number one, Malachi chapter three, verses uh, five and six. Uh, Anybody on Periscope, write the, write the scripture down, Malachi chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. I'm working from the New Living Translation. Uh, do you have it? Oh, yeah, you do have it. I printed it out for <laughs> Okay. All right. Somebody said you're making the saints lazy by printing out the scripture. And I said, man, if I can make the saints lazy by giving them one piece of paper, they are really... <laughs> Lazy, amen. <laughs> amen, y'all. You have to already be lazy, and that doesn't make you lazy. Right. Okay, Malachi chapter three. You ready? Okay, you praying for understanding? Because what is the angel looking for today? Not just you saying, "Oh, that's true. It's in the Bible," but you are making listening part of your lifestyle. Okay, look. It says, "I am sending you the prophet Elijah." 
before the great and dreadful day of the Lord arrives, right? His preaching will do what? Turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts, come on, of children where? To their fathers. And if it doesn't happen, what's going to happen? I'm going to have to do what? Come and strike the land with the curse. So what is going to happen? He said, before it's over, what is going to be the deal? The father's hearts are going to be what? Turn to the and children's hearts. Okay, you ready? Point number two. Let me give this to you. And then here's the compacted version. And we're going to unpack it later. You ready? Every New Testament Christian, are you there? Every New Testament Christian is required <laughs> is required to have the values and the attitude of a father. Every Christian is required to have the what? Values and the attitude of a now, now, I'm, I'm going to explain in a moment that when I, I'm using the word father and son, but we know they're mothers and daughters, amen? Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm, rather than having to do all of those he, she, it, they, the, all, <laughs> because I'm dealing with a spiritual position. But listen, 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 listen to what I'm saying. I am saying that I need a father to whom I'm a son, and I also need to be a father to those Oh, who are my son. Yes. I need to have someone pouring into me, and I need to be pouring into others. Yes. Yes. The values and the attitudes of a father, and you're supposed to have what? The values and the what? Attitudes. attitudes. My clicker's not working. Here it goes. The values and attitudes of a what? Son, so I need to have the values and attitude of a what? Father, right? So there are some that I am fathering, and I need to have the values and attitude of a what? Son, so that there's somebody who is fathering me. Did you get that? What are values? Values are my important and lasting beliefs about what I believe to be good, and my values affect my life. My attitude. Anybody know what an attitude is? Yeah, yeah you have one, right? <laughs> my attitude is my tendency to respond a certain way, either positively or negatively, to a person or situation. So some people come around, you ever get an attitude with a person? Yeah. Or they come around, they have an attitude with you? Yeah. Whenever they see you, they have an attitude? So, look at it this way. Let's say one of my values is I value perfume or I value cologne. Right? Everybody doesn't value that, but some people do, right? Yeah. Some people never wear it, and some people wear it all the time, right? Yeah. It's a value. As a result, I buy perfume or I buy cologne because it is a value, right? right. Which perfume I wear depends on my attitude right. as to what I want, <laughs> what effect right. I want the perfume or cologne to have. Anybody there with me? Huh? Yeah, yeah. My, 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 my single buddy, he, he would make sure that when he bought uh, cologne, it would have pheromones in it. You know how pheromones, they, they send <laughs> Come on, they, they send it out. So he wouldn't buy it unless they, they had pheromones. Anybody know what pheromones are? Y'all know. Oh, y'all know more about them than I do? Child, we better listen. <laughs> right. So depending on his agenda, right? His value was, I'm going to have some of this stuff. My, my, but based on his attitude, depending on whether or not it was a knockout or it was a little subtle. Okay. He walked past you and you're like, oh, what was that? <laughs> Bells will be ringing. You know, so here you go, right? So he has a different flow going on, you follow? Based on his attitude. Every New Testament Christian, can we read that point number two? Has to have the what? 
values and the attitude of a what, everybody? Father and have, come on, the values and the attitude of a son. So there must be somebody I am pouring my life into and somebody who's doing what? Pouring in life into you. So somebody I am in submission to and honoring and somebody who is also honoring me. Yes. Are you seeing that? Yes. So, and again, when I'm using the word father and son, we know in the scripture, childs, child, childs, <laughs> children, husband and wife, all those kind of terms. But in a simple way, wait a minute, what I'm really saying before Jesus can return and get the thing wrapped up, we have to be just like him, right? Yeah. And what was he to his father? He was a son to the father, right? And he said, when I return, you're going to be just like me. Yeah. So Jesus was in relationship with his father, meaning that you and I got to be not only in relationship with God, but also... Yes! So we need mothers in the church to teach women how to love their husbands. Amen, somebody. I'm not fussing at my wife when I say that, so y'all can think, no, that's what it says. No, we need mothers in the church to teach women how to catch a man and keep it. Amen. Come on, somebody, because some, some know how to catch him and some know how to keep him. <laughs> so we need that. But joint needed. The catchers and the keepers get together. We need mothers in the church to help you know how to, how to develop what you got. <laughs> Oh, y'all don't want to say amen. But anyway, that's true anyhow. Amen, that's true. Are you listening to me? Yes. We need mothers in the church. We need fathers in the church to teach men how to be men. But the men in the church also need to be in submission to men. Yes. Yes. And I'm sensing what God is calling spirit of life into. Listen to me. You remember what I said earlier. This is not just a teaching about a doctrine, right? So that we can say, oh, I understand that. No, I'm talking about we have to shift how we live. Yes, yes. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Fathers, pour into us as a son. And as sons, we be a blessing to the father. We're pouring into others. Most Christians will agree exactly with what I'm saying about relationships, but they won't change their value or attitude. Are you getting that? Yes. Most Christians will say, Pastor, that's true. But I'm not going to do church any differently than I'm doing it now. So I come to church, we preach, we sing, we talk at the church. Some of us do, right? We eat together. Some of us do. Not, not putting you down if you don't. Some of us talk together. When it's all over, we all say, thank you. It's good to see you. Goodbye. See you later. And we go about our lives. And whether you are struggling during the week, you don't tell us. And we don't tell you. Because our relationships are built in such a way that we can keep the phony phony going. And make it appear that we got it all together because we're not in a father-son relationship or a son-father relationship. Are you hearing that? Yeah, so we'll come in the building and we say, Pastor, that's true. That's not what the angel's looking for. Everything in the Bible is true. The angel's looking for, what are you going to apply? How are you going to live differently? Another thing I need to say that's, that's tough about this message. I'm not preaching to you about something I excel in. Because right. I like to preach years ahead of what, you know, study years ahead and then preach it. I struggle and relate. Relationships scare me. They do. My wife would tell you, they, they scare me. Woo! They scare me. I don't know why. I have suspicions. But they scare me when people get too close to me. So I, I've learned how to, how to act like I'm close. Because if you get too close, how can I get away from you? Yeah, so I know something's wrong. So I'm working on me. And then I come to church and hold a mirror. <laughs> and say, hey, what about you? You gotta work on you because nobody can get close to you. Or when we do, you scratch us. Or when we do, you take. 
one bad day and that's all you remember. So the relationships has to change. Now, now, can I get started with the sermon? <laughs> We're still introducing. Are you here now? And I'm not fussing. I'm trying to get us to understand where we have to go. Are you there? Oh, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Every little boy and every little girl needs a dad. Amen, lights. Amen. 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 That, I'm not saying you don't need a mama. See, I'm so fractured that if you don't call my name, I think you don't like me. That you're against me. So you can't say, I'm, I'm over here pointing, but I'm, I'm not pointing at y'all. I'm just preaching. <laughs> Are you hearing me? So I'm not fussing at y'all. I'm just, I'm just preaching. I'm just, <laughs> I don't know why my hand's going over there. But anyway, but the, the thing is, I got to be big enough to where when somebody says every boy needs a dad, I don't have to get offended because I'm a mama. Right. It'll take away your value. Right. Because nobody can de replace the mama. Amen. Oh, I thought y'all would say amen to that. Amen. They had that foolish article on the news the other day. They said, a man gave birth to a baby. I say, you must be crazy. That was a woman who grew a mustache yeah. to push that baby out. <laughs> no, that wasn't no man. That was a confused woman <laughs> who, was, who was behaving as, but still was acting like a woman. <laughs> oh, let me get back to my notes. So anyway. <laughs> so when, when I say that, I'm not excluding anybody. Are you hearing me? But I'm so fractured. That if you don't say my name, I feel bad. Yes. We all need the love. And by the way, this is not a Father's Day sermon. It's, it's going deeper than that. It is a, a relationships in the kingdom have to change. Amen. We need the encouragement, the instruction, and the correction brought to us by a father. And guess what? You can't really correct people well if you're not in relationship with them. Amen. I was with a boy the other day. Man, that boy was going crazy. All is going crazy. I had to, you know, put him in the room. No, he's coming out. You're not coming out the door. He grabbed a hockey stick. All right? Hockey puck. And he came over to me with the hockey puck. And he put the hockey puck behind me. To try to move me from the door. Now, what 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 did he do with the hockey puck? Yes, yes. how come he didn't hit me? He was Not only he respected me, but also we are in relationship. So even though you're crazy, we still in relationship with each other. Are you following that? So I can understand. He 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 had a he, he picked up something else. And he came around, and instead of swinging, that means moving all around. I, I saw what you're doing. I know. I know you. 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 You jacked up. But because I'm a father in a relationship with you, I'm not holding it against you that you're acting crazy. So I can come to church and say, Lord, I'm stone crazy. <laughs> And God will say, I'm not holding that against you because I knew you were crazy when you were born. You came out the doctor like, what? <laughs> Nurse ran out of the room, amen? So now, let me get back to my notes. So, <laughs> correction, are you all hearing me? I'm telling the truth. One of the greatest tragedies in the world is that we have little boys and little girls and young men and young women and old men and old women who don't have fathers. Amen. Are you hearing me? It's a tragedy. And sometimes we don't understand the power of a father until the men are missing. Yes. Yes. We get identity from the father. We get approval from the father. And approval from the father is different from approval from the mother. Yes. Praise God, mama kept me alive, but I was always smelling around, trying to smell up on a man. Yes. Because all the women smelled the same. When a musty man came by and said, yeah, I want to be musty like that. Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm telling the 
truth. There's something different about men. Seriously. We just, we just deal with things different. I was a little kid. He climbed over the fence. All the ladies said, ah! The little boy climbed over the fence. What was I saying? Boy, you better climb back over the fence. <laughs> it didn't bother me that you climbed over the fence. Climb back over. I ain't climbing over the fence. <laughs> you bad enough. I'm glad I got a boy who can climb. Yeah. 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 Woman's like, he breaking the roof. I'm, I'm looking, boy, look at my boy climb. <laughs> climb, boy. Are you hearing that? None of us was were meant to walk alone. All of us need brothers, we need sisters, we need friends, we need mothers, we need spouses. We also need the strength and protection that comes from having a father. Nobody was meant to walk alone. And just as it's true in the natural, guess what? It's even more true in the spiritual realm. In the family of God, brothers and sisters, each one of us, am I on point number three? Yes. Each one of us, point number three, each one of us should walk with a what, everybody? Father. I know you're trying to guess my answer. Each one of us should walk with a what? Father, no matter our position in life. No matter how old you are. You get that? God in his wisdom, what did God do? He gave us mothers and he gave us fathers. But we are the ones who have ignored or misunderstood or underutilized what God has put on the earth. So some of us struggle with having spiritual fathers because we have not had good experiences with earthly fathers. Amen. Amen. Are you here? Yeah. We have absent fathers. Silent fathers. Right? Abusive fathers, yes. foolish fathers, mean fathers. And when our lives are formed by the broken and sharp emotions of a bad father, in the natural, that can affect us in the spirit. All right. And when I have a thought problem with an earthly father, it leaves a deep hurt. And sometimes it can leave a lifelong struggle to relate to a spiritual father. Yeah. Yeah. Are you all in the room? Yeah. I remember I remember my meeting, first meeting with Apostle uh, Danny Williams. Spiritually, he was set in my life as a father. Had the same vision. We never talked to each other. But I've seen in Florida, you know about how I want to have the seniors together and the children together. And, and, and that's what he's doing on the acres of land there, right? He's doing all of that. I didn't know when I met him. But something clicked in the spirit when we met. But listen, listen. As soon as he started talking to me, something rose up in me in rebellion against him. Because as a man, he started speaking order into my life and he was not fussing at me. He would just tell me what I needed to do. But I was fighting with the father of my imagination and the anger I had against him came out against him. So some of the craziness you see now is not even related to anybody alive today. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I have to wonder, why, 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 when he speaks order into my life, I bristle. Are you hearing me? Anger against somebody who wasn't there to give me the order. And he, listen, he had to be father enough to not hold that against me. Because the first time he talked to me, I couldn't hear him. The second time, I couldn't hear him. The third time, I couldn't hear him. How, how many times, y'all? <laughs> Are you listening to me? Until, until, I, I literally had to write it down and notice he's telling me the same thing over and 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 over again. As a father, how many times have you told your children <laughs> to do something one way and they did not do it like that? Y'all don't want to say amen. And you had to tell them again. 
Okay, I know you had the Wonder Baby, right? The Wonder Baby came out. You told him one time, uh, one time wonder, amen? But some of us didn't have the Wonder Baby, and some of y'all were not the Wonder Baby, amen? You still not doing stuff your mama told you to do. Anyhow, let me get back to my notes, right? So, <laughs> so it becomes difficult to uh, uh, embrace a father. Because of being abandoned by a father, of being mistreated by a mother, of not having somebody care. So then it's difficult to trust somebody. Listen, listen. And it makes it difficult to even trust God. So I'm trying to draw closer to God. I'm trying to have a relationship with him. And what does God say? I'm your heavenly. Uh-oh. I'm in trouble. <laughs> People do that. Pass the car. Oh, am I in trouble? Why, why would you be in trouble, Pass the car? <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm calling to give you some money or something. You know? Oh, am I am in trouble? Why would you be in trouble? Because some of you see me as your father, as an authority figure, but in a negative way, not as a source of blessing, not as somebody who wants to pour life into you. My greatest joy would be for you to be successful Amen. and to clap my hand seeing what you're doing good. Amen. Number four, and then we're getting to, help me Lord on the time. How are we doing baby? You gotta help me. Uh, number four, bad experiences with earthly fathers. Do you see that? Yes. Can often make it difficult for people to know God as he desires to be known. Whoa! So I can come to church. Did you write that in? Yes. I can come to church and have a spiritual heart condition that does not draw near to God. Listen. And I will not have healthy, transparent relationships. What do you mean by transparent? Everybody don't need to know all your business. Amen. Keep some of it. <laughs> but you don't have to come in church with 99 wings flying all in when we know your, your, your stuff is dragging. <laughs> you haven't flown one day in your life and you come up in church with 99 wings flying. Listen, I can be in Christ and not be connected to a spiritual father and not see my spiritual leader as a father. I would not see others in the church as sons and daughters of God in the same family. So what is the solution? Rejecting the father? No. The solution is to find a father, build a relationship with a father you can trust so you can have, listen, the inheritance yes. that only comes to sons. Yes. Uh, down the road. God is choosing to provide fathers in a time when there's fatherlessness everywhere, right? He's taking action. He's turning the hearts of the fathers to the children, and he's taking the hearts of the children and turning them to the father. Let me say another thing. I'm just introducing, right, the principles. Here's another way to look at it. You know the scripture that says we ought to love one another? Great commandment. We ought to love one another. Watch this. So we accept the truth. Yes, I'm, we're supposed to love one another, right? But the question, how do we love one another? How can we be in relationship to one another to fulfill the commandment? So we need to love one another, but how, what needs to change about my life so that my life can be representative of me loving you? Yes. Let me say it another way. This man was in church, very spiritual, in church. Everybody needs to repent. I mean, they need to deeply repent. That's what he's saying. That's his message in church. Everybody needs to deeply repent before God. Everybody needs to deeply repent before God. Another pastor was visiting, so the pastor asked his pastor, this man with this deep repentance issue, he said, has that man deeply repented? No, he hasn't. But he believes it's true. So he goes around talking about it, but his life has not changed. He has not brought God his deepest fears. Yes. He has not shared his deepest pain with God. He is not going to God with his, with his resentments. Yes. He is not going to God with the lies he tells himself. Mm. 
So his repentance was shallow. In fact, the man had not even surrendered to the truth. Listen, listen. So he was in the truth saying everybody needs to repent. And he really wasn't even born again. So again, when I talk about it, I'm not just saying, oh, this is some doctrine that we need to check off. I understand that. But let me give you an illustration. It looks like we're going to be okay. You ready? Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. And this is just introducing it. It ties all the way through. I'm not looking for you to say, hey, buddy. I'm not looking for you to say it is true. I'm looking for you to ask God to help you personally to see what shifts, shifts need to take place in your life to make it real. Yeah. You ready? Luke chapter 15. Somebody put it up on Periscope. Wake up, Periscope. Wake up. Put it on <laughs> Luke chapter 15, verses 18 to 24. You ready? ready? This is the story of the prodigal son. Let's read and notice what he's going to say. The deceived Patrice. I will get up and go to where? My Are y'all reading the Bible with me? I will get up and do what? And go to my father and I will say to him, Father, <laughs> I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer what? Worthy. You need to underline that because that's an issue for somebody. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. So he returned home to who, everybody? His father. And while he was what, everybody? Still a long way off, what happened? His father saw him coming. And what happened? His father was filled with what, everybody? Love and filled with what? So when Jesus looks at you today, does he look at you with eyes of anger because of failure, because of issues? No, he is full of love and he looks at you with compassion. Yes, yes. What does he do? He runs to you to embrace you, right? And to kiss you rather than slapping you down. His son said to him, verse 21, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But his father said to the servants, quick, bring me the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. Kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with the what, everybody? Feast. For this, my what, everybody? That this son of mine was what? Dead. Dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. And then what does it say? Left the what? Hallelujah anyhow. Are you getting that? Notice verse 21 again. What is the boy saying to his father in verse 21? He's saying what father? I have what? Right, right. And what else did he say? I am no longer worthy. Worthy. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. So he said, listen, what is he saying? Please change the relationship with me so I can get in at the level that I think I deserve. I'm no longer to be treated by your son. This is the problem many of us have in the church. We come to God. We confess our sins. We get right with the Father. The Father welcomes us back, guaranteed. No limitations, no restrictions, total. God now views you as if you have never sinned a day in your life. Yes. You're a brand new baby, never had a sinful thought in your life. And then we continue to hold on to the belief, the value, the attitude that I'm no longer worthy to be called a son. God, let's change the relationship. I know I'm in the family of God in my mind, but in my heart, yeah. I live as a servant yeah. in the church. It, yeah. it, it would break my heart if my sons were walking around the house acting like servants. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. It's okay for them to wash dishes and do all of that. But, I mean, no, that's one thing. But to go around and say, may I, may I please have a little toothpaste? 
to put on my toothbrush. <laughs> may, may I please have a little extra spoon of grits to go? Come on now. May I please, please have a glass of water? Come on, you're, you're in the house. You're in your own house. Everything I have is yours. And everything I have is your inheritance. So are you a son or are you a slave? Because the slaves don't get the inheritance. The reason you don't feel you're worthy is because of what you experienced when you were away from your father. What was your father doing while you were away? Looking for you. Filling up with love and compassion. Waiting for the day of your return. When you and I get this right, listen to this statement. We will know what it's like to live like a son of God. I know you can't go there yet. To think like a son of God. The son of God confronted with the storm said, peace be still. To act like a son of God. To behave like a son of God rather than behaving like a servant. Now I know we serve, we serve, we serve, but we serve as sons and daughters of God. Are you getting that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Last scripture, last scripture, make it, no. Next to the last, Galatians chapter four. Come on, hurry up, go there. Galatians chapter four. Galatians chapter four, I don't have all of it. You can read all of chapter four, all of Galatians, read the whole Bible, anything you want to do, right? Galatians <laughs> chapter four, <laughs> begin at verse 22. The scriptures say, that Abraham had what? Two sons. By the way, Abraham is a father. Did you know that? Yes. He's the father of the faithful. Yes. You know, there are a bunch of fathers in the Bible. David is a father. Adam is a father. Moses is a father. I mean, go all up down the line, but we'll enjoy that later, all right? Scriptures say that Abraham had what, everybody? Two sons. Two sons. Watch this. One son came from the slave wife, and one came from his freeborn wife. Mm -hmm. The son of the slave wife was born in what kind of attempt? A human. human attempt to bring about the fulfillment of God's promise. But the son of the freeborn wife was born of what? God's Man, did you hear that? So God is saying to you, he who hath begun a good work in you, he's gone to finish the work. God is going to pull it off. God is going to pull it off. And I know today you feel so far from God, but guess what? God is everywhere. So when you back up, you just run into him in another place. Amen? Everywhere. Verse number 30. But what do the scriptures say about that? Get this. What does this say? Get rid of the slave. Come on. Get rid of your slave mentality. <laughs> Come on. Get rid of your slave mentality. Get rid of the slave. Yes. And her son... For the son of the slave woman, what everybody, will not share in the what? Inheritance of the free woman's son. So dear brothers and sisters, we are not children of the slave woman. We are what? Come on, come on. And because I'm a child in right position with God, I have a right to the inheritance. And the inheritance only goes to son. In the church, two kinds of people. Those who live in bondage and those who live in faith, they walk in liberty yes. based on the principles of God's yes. word. Yes. It doesn't say they never messed up. No, the Bible said the righteous will fall mm -hmm. seven times, but will get up again. Yes. It's very important to discover where you live. Because if you live as a slave, guess what? You're not going to get an inheritance. Mm -hmm. No, you're not. It's important to understand when you get the sun position right, heaven opens to you. Amen. So where do you stand in your relationship with Christ? Are you a slave or are you a son? It's not just a truth to be believed. It's an experience yes. to live. Yes. Yes. i got to live as a son of God. Yes. And, and it's the revival that's coming, a relationship. In practical words, every senior leader of a ministry needs an apostolic covering a genuine father-son relationship, listen, so they can pour into my life so I can advance in life. Yes. 
My spiritual gifts are exponentially growing. Not because of just me, but my spiritual fathers are pouring into me. So it won't take me the years it took them to get to where they are. So even though I'm starting behind, I'm catching up rapidly. And then every believer in the church needs to have a sense of security of having a relationship walking with a father in the church receiving not only instruction but correction. Yes. So you can develop in life and be that all that God wants you to be. To receive from a father. Amen, amen. Some of us are good servants always at church but we're not good sons. Mm. We're always creeping around. May I please have a little spoon of grits to go with my grits. May I please have some water? <laughs> Revelation 21, we're done. We're going to pray. Yeah. Revelation 21, because somebody put that on Periscope. Revelation 21, verses 1 through 7. Stay with me, Periscope. You're watching on YouTube. Read your Bible along with us. Amen. Revelation 21. Then I saw what, everyone? New oh, praise the Lord. I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth passed away. And there was no longer any sea. By the way, some people believe that the sea is there to separate us from the craziness that comes when we all get together without God. <laughs> Amen. But we got some crazy, crazy. Anyway. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, what? Coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride, what? Adorned for her husband. You ever seen a bride dress up ugly for the wedding? No. So you know this is good looking, right? Verse number three. And I heard, unless you're a gothic or something like that, right? And I heard, and that'd be nice to a gothic, right? And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, behold, what? The tabernacle of God is among men. He will dwell among them and what? They shall be his people and who? God himself will be among them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no longer any death, no longer any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have done what everybody? Passed away. And he who sits on the throne says, Behold, I make all things new. And he said, Write of what? For these words are faithful and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am what, everybody? I am Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end. And I will give to the one who what? Thirst from the springs of the water of life without cost. He who will inherit these things, what? And I will be his God. And what everybody? He will be my son. Wow, my inheritance is Amen. I will receive everything that Jesus has received. Yes. Huh? Oh, Lord. That's how big this thing is. Oh, Lord. That's how big it is. Right. So I no longer want to be a slave. I want to be a son. Yes. I don't want to just come to church to hear something that's true. I want to hear the truth. But I want to incorporate it in my life. I want to practice it. Yes. I want to behave like a son. Yes. I want to know that my heavenly father watches over me. He loves me. We're going to pray and minister to those of you who want to receive your inheritance. Those of you who want to walk into your position as sons and daughters of God. All things are yours. All things. And in this house, every spiritual gift is resident. The spirit of healing is here. Somebody has it. I don't have to have it, but I know it's in the house. Somebody has it. And you're sitting there, and the Holy Spirit is saying, let's pray for this one. We don't pray for them. And you said, oh, it wasn't God. No, God was pushing you to do your part. We were doing our part to set the atmosphere. It's in the house. The spirit of wisdom is in the house. Where somebody can look at your situation and give you wisdom so you won't have 25 years of mistakes. Yes. Yes. And then another 35 years trying to catch up yes. from all the mistakes. Are you hearing that? It's resident in the house. It's part of your inheritance. Yes. 
We want to walk in it. We want to receive it. So I'm going to say goodbye to everybody on Periscope. We love you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, did you tell them about our website? Go to our website. Stay connected with us. God bless you. We appreciate your presence. And we're going to put some music on and we're going to worship. Oh, I didn't even get to that other slide. This was the guy. This is what we are really saying. The prodigal son, I want to go home. And guess what? You can go home today. You can come home, right? Yes. You look.